Welcome back to the exercises of the user defined functions. We have six exercises and I want to make them all with you so I can show you how I would do it. Let's start with exercise one. Create two variables called price and vat and create a function called calculate vat. So let's do that. That takes two parameters and returns a variable calculated price. Print out the price, VAT, and total price. So it takes two parameters, price and VAT. Now let's set price equal to something. Let's set price equal to 100 and VAT to 0 0.21. And you can change it to whatever you want, but in my country, it's 0 0.21. So what we want to do inside our function is to create a new variable called calculate the price and set it equal into parentheses to price multiplied by fat and we want to add price. The parentheses aren't necessary but that's the way I like to do math just to put always parentheses around whatever needs to be calculated first. So we need to return calculated price and outside of our function we want to echo out so the price VAT and total price so let's start with price and set it equal to price it's two variables that we created so we don't need our function first well we need it for the third one because the total price and remember we're returning it so we can use it inside our echo and we want to call the function calculated VAT. And inside our parentheses, we want to add price and VAT. Let's save it. Refresh my browser, and we're getting an error on line 9 because I'm not setting VAT equal to 0 0.21. So if I refresh the browser, and let me also add some breaks, add a greater than sign. Refresh the browser and add another one. And you can see that the price is 100, the VAT is 0 0.21, and the total price is 100. And this may, may seem easy but if we change price to 1000. You can see that the total price and price changes. And if we used it without a function, we needed to change it everywhere. So let's continue on with exercise number two. Let me remove it. Create a variable called year and create a function called is leap year that checks if the year is a leap year. So let's start off by doing that. Let's create a year and set it equal to 2000. And let's create a function called is leap year. And if it's a leap year, we need to return a Boolean value. And, and we haven't talked that much about booleans, but it's pretty handy, and I will show you why. And then the exercises of the control structures, we discussed what the leap year is. So our leap year function takes one param, which is year. Inside the function, we want to create a condition. So let's say that if, and remember, a leap year is a year that's that can be divided by 404. So let's say that if year modulus 400 is equal to 0, or year modulus 4 is equal to 0. If it's true, return true. Else, return false. Now remember, a Boolean returns a true and a false value. So what we need to do outside of our function is to create another if statement and our condition is is leap year with year as a parenthesis or I mean as a parameter excuse me and if it's true so if our condition which is the function is true so in the if statement we want to echo something out and we want to echo out year is a leap year Actually, let's replace year with the actual year. 
And if it's not a leap year, we want to echo out year is not a leap year. So let's save it. Refresh the browser, and you can see that 2000 is a leap year. But 2001 is not a leap year. And 2004 actually is. So let's continue on with the third one. Create two variables called num1 and num2 and create four functions add number, subtract, num subtract number, multiply number, and divide number. So let's start off with that. num1 is equal to 10. Well, num1 is one variable. And num2 is equal to 15. So let's create a function called add numbers and pass it to numbers as a parameter. So let's say num1, num2. The inside our function, oh, let's continue on first. The function accepts two parameters and returns the addition, subtraction, multiplicity, and division of two numbers. So it's a return key. So we need to return num1 plus num2. And that's actually it. So let's copy paste it. Now let's change add of the second function to subtract and let's return a minus. Third one is a division. So let's say divide numbers, or multiply, excuse me, or we can do it as a last one. So let's say multiply numbers with a star sign. And right now we need to print them out. And since we need to add the function name to the end of the string, we need to have a return key because remember it doesn't work with an echo. So let's create an echo and say addition of num1 and num2 is and now we want to call the function add numbers, num1 and num2. And we also want to echo out a break. So let's save it and see if this works. And this doesn't work on line 28 because we forgot a punctuation mark. Let's save it. And we forgot something else. And this is, I don't know what went wrong there. And you can see that the addition of 10 and 15 is 25. So let's copy paste it a couple times. So the second one is the subtraction. And it's not add numbers, but subtract numbers. The third one is the multiplicity. It's multiply. And the last one is the division. Is it, and the function name is divide numbers. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that they all work. So let's continue on with the next one, which is exercise number four. Let me remove all the code. To create a function called swap numbers that takes two parameters, so num1 and num2, and inside the function, swap the numbers. So let's create a function called swap numbers. And you have two parameters, so num1, num2. And we need to swap the numbers. So this can be done with a new variable that we need to create in our function. And I want to call it temp of temporary. And what we need to do is set temporary equal to num1. And what we want to do with num1 is to set num1 equal to num2. And num2 needs to be equal to temp. And let's add an echo. And let's say after swapping, num1 is equal to num1. And num2 is equal to num2. Let's save it. Let's call the function to see if, if it works. Let's pass in num1 num2 let's create num1 num2 first so num1 is 10 and num2 is 20. let's save it 
refresh the browser and you can see that num1 is equal to 20 now and num2 is equal to 10. So we're storing a number in a temporary variable and then we're swapping num1 and num2. But num temp is equal to num1 so we're saying that num2 now is equal to num1. All right, let's continue on. Even or odd. Create a function that checks if a given number, num1, is even or odd. Echo the expected output. So let's create a variable, num1, and set it equal to 9. Let's create a function called even or not. And let's pass in num1. And inside our function, we want to create an if statement to see if it's even. And the way you do that is with a modulus. So we want to see if num1 modulus 2 is 0, so there is no remainder left. And if that's true, we want to echo out num1 is even. Else, echo out num1 is not even. Let's save it. Let's call our function, even or not. And the argument is num1. Save it. Refresh the browser, and you can see that 9 is not even because the remainder is 1. Uh, if we change it to 8, and you can see that 8 is actually even, which is true. And even if we say 800, and 800 is even, and 801 is not even. So let's continue on with the last exercise. Prime number. Create a function is prime that checks if num1 is a prime number or not. Return true if it's a prime number and return false if it's not a prime number. All right, so let's create num1 first and set it equal to seven. And let's create our function is prime. Now let's pass in num1. So let's create an if statement first. And inside our condition, well, the parentheses, but our condition is to see if num1 is equal to 1. Because 1 is not a prime number. And if that's true, return false. Because remember, we have to work with the true or false. And what we want to do if it's not equal to 1, we want to create a for each loop where we want to say that variable i is equal to 2 and variable y, i, excuse me, is less than num1 divided by 2. And what we want to do then is increase variable i. So in our for loop, we want to do another check. So let's create an if statement and we want to see if num1 and variable i is equal to 0. If that's true, return false. And outside our else loop, we want to return 1. So let's save it. Let's create an if statement outside of our function. And let's check is prime. And pass in num1. Let's create an echo. And if it's true, we want to say that this number is a prime. Otherwise, echo out this number is not a prime. So let's save it. Refresh the browser and 7 is a prime. And let me prime number. So let me show you an image. So a prime number. Wow, this doesn't work. Is 2, 3, 5, 7. So let's test it out. 2, 3. 5, 7. And you can see that they're all true. But if we change it to 8, I can see that I just made a mistake because the appersend needs to be modulus. So let's save it, refresh it, and it works now because this is not a prime number. And if we go back to 7, you can see that 7 is a prime number. This was it for this episode. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.